Well, this is one peach of a road I just stumbled across. Exploring our old territory here. So it's going to be a brief video. It's mainly out for a pleasure ride today. As you know, you know it's funny. On the Harley, I uh, I'm more prone to talk. I'm more prone to yap. I'm more prone to gab. I'm more prone to reflect because it's just a slower experience. But you know, on this bike, <laughs> as you guys know who've ridden it and bikes that are similar, you just want to play. And uh, you know, I find myself uh, just wanting to play. So I just played. But towards the end of this journey. On the way home, I wanted to bring up a tire situation. I, uh, you know, this uh, BMW S1000R came with Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa tires. These are the OEM tires that they came with. And uh, well, they're great, love them. Super sticky and they just have a lot of feel. I just I have so much confidence in these things. And uh, planned on putting another set on. But last time they just didn't show up on time when I ordered them. So I wound up with Dunlop Q3s, which I know I talked about in past videos. It's a great tire. You know, it's a good, they just have more life than these do. And. Uh, Good compromise, good, good price, they work well on the track. So overall it's less annoying because these, you know, the Rosso courses, the Pirellis, they, they burn out pretty quick. You know, I said they felt the Q3s felt stiffer, you know, I got a more difficult time with corner confidence on them. And it got better, you know, I, I learned that I had, I kept them less pumped up, put less air in them, stiffer sidewall. Then they have that carbon sidewall, if I'm not mistaken. Which is good in the corner because you can feel, you know, when the flex comes, you can feel it, but it's the small stuff, you don't feel as much. And, uh, you know, I like, to, I like to feel everything. Like most people. Long story short, I just, I switched them out again. The Dunlops wore out. I got some Rosso courses back on it. You know, make, it makes a significant difference for me personally. It may not for others, and you know, I know, you know, put another person next to me on the same road or the same little bit of track. That's a better rider on Q3s and me on these tires, and I'll get my doors blown off. I mean, clearly, it's not that big of a difference. But comparing myself to myself, a lot more confidence in these Rosso courses. It just. And maybe it's because it's what I, I got the bike with, and it just, it's like an old friend. But I'm gonna have a hard time switching away. You know, the next time I may go to Rosso 3s or try to find some in the middle of the road because these suckers burn out pretty quick too. And I, I think I burn these out even quicker because I have more confidence in them so I ride harder with them. Anyway, just a public service message from Minner. Oh, in my name, Minner. When I was in fifth grade, I stopped growing, and I was uh, I was both pretty thin and shorter than my friends. And it was kind of an abrupt change. So for a year, they called me Little Man, and then I grew I grew again, and then well, it just it turned into Minner at some point. But I think it's derived from Little Man. So once again, sorry about the screaming, but I am on the highway. One of the particular things you notice when you, even you just put these tires on is when you look at the profile it's just there's a steepness to it that's not on the Q3s the Q3s are more rounded and you can see how these tires are just shaped for dropping in so it really it really encourages you to just flip the bike back and forth it makes you search for corners once again I'm not I'm not putting those Q3s down and I'm not saying that the difference is astronomical but it's noticeable it certainly is. And another thing I noticed is on the highway, you know, it feels almost a little less steady at speed by meaning I can feel all those little bumps and undulations and grooves 
more so on these Rosso courses and I can't think of threes. Which in some ways you might say is a little disturbing, but I find it comforting. I like to, once again, the, the feedback is something that I, I like. Let me slow down here in the uh, in another lane so you guys have a chance of hearing me. Bring it down to a more respectable speed. I don't like these lanes though, a lot of action. But it's a slow day for California traffic, clearly. I mean, this is, well, this is around rush hour, so I must be heading the right direction. I'm not used to this road. This is probably one of those weird roads that doesn't get as busy in this direction. But lately I've been riding that Harley, and I got a, I got a little uh, into the cruiser mode. I made some upgrades, look at my last video. I've been riding it around, and I got caught in that loop of thinking about the performance of a fat boy. And, you know, think about what I could do to make it more competent, especially in, in cornering and in cornering stability. The lean angle is, is the lean angle, that's it. You know, I'm not gonna start changing foot controls and gaining a half inch here and there. That's fruitless in my opinion. But I got wrapped up into it. And then, you know, I realized that I needed new tires. That's one reason why I couldn't ride this thing because every time I checked the tire pressure on the, on the Q3s, they were burnt anyway. The tread was gone, but the pressure was dropping to like 27, 26 pounds. It was clearly some sort of slow leak. So I avoided it, and uh, I get the tire spin on yesterday and I hopped back on it. And it's amazing. Once again, I've made videos about this before, but just to say it again, it's amazing for any guys out there that just ride cruisers or just ride sport bikes. The juxtaposition between these two and how much you can appreciate the characteristics of each, each bike after riding the other is it's astounding. So I get on this bike and, oh my, it's just, it's a missile. It's just an absolute, just weapon. And it's funny what limitations you have on the cruiser in, in, in terms of what you can do, what you can safely do and pull off. You know, you have to keep in mind braking distances because the brakes in that thing are, well, it's cruiser brakes. And you have to keep in mind acceleration. How many cars can I pass and get back into a lane safely before I make my turn and get off my exit? And also, you know, how nimble it is and how narrow it is in terms of navigating tight spaces. This thing, it seems like there's almost no limitation, and which is a bad thing, I know. And that's why I have the Cruiser, because it comes to a point where you're just doing some ridiculous stuff, or you want to. But it's, I mean, it's so much fun. It's just an absolute joy to ride. And I've had this bike now for two solid years. It's been just about two years since I purchased it. And every time I get on it, especially after riding that cruiser, I'm just I'm stricken and just blown away. And it got me thinking. It got me thinking about the new, the new Harley releases. Make sure I'm missing my turns a bit. And the new soft tails. And you know, I think a lot of the driving force and what they've done is increasing the capability of those bikes because they know that people want it, and I applaud them for it. But your mind gets rolling in terms of, you know, what the performance is going to be and whether or not that's going to make the bike more desirable. And yeah, I'm sure. But once again, the juxtaposition, it makes you step back and look at things from a more global perspective in categories of bikes and, and what they're meant for. Because now there's every niche you can imagine. And not only are there, you know, super sports and super bikes, now there's a super naked crowd and now there's there's a crowd of bikes that are cruiser-ish or that kind of do everything scrambler kind of zone and they're super confident. They can corner really well and they can you can play with them on the track. You know Yamaha is making some great examples. I, I forget the, the, the series of letters and numbers, you know what I'm talking about that Yamaha uh, FC9 uh, you know, similar bike it has you know the yellow graphics on it and it's more of a retro look. That's a good example, it's kind of a do-everything kind of bike, but when you, when you ride a bike that is like this bike that's quite track capable, not track perfect, but quite track capable, and also quite canyon road capable, you step back and you, and you look at what Harley's done and you say, well, it's, you know, it's cute. I'm, I'm, it's, what they've done is it's fun, yeah, and I'm glad they've done it and they've been moving in the right direction, but those bikes are still cruisers, you know? And that they're more competent and some of those bikes in the hands of somebody who is extremely aggressive and talented 
they're gonna mess with some sport bike riders. That's more talent than Blake, clearly. After getting on this thing, you realize it's it's a world of difference. And you know, in a situation like you're caught in traffic and this this little Honda up here is getting in your way, and you, and you just wanna you know just kind of get around things. You've had, a, you've had enough, and you know, poor guy, he didn't do anything to me right there, and it's not my point, you know. So just if someone's riding too close to you. You're in a rush, whatever it is, you want to rush. A super naked is a super naked, and a cruiser is a cruiser. Lest anyone forget, and uh, lest anyone listen to how it's turned. Oh, my video is getting too long lately, so I'm gonna start splitting these things up so they're more tolerable, but. Watch the next video. Uh, it's my buddy on this bike. He, he's getting his bike worked on, and uh, you know I took my fat boy out. He took this. We were uh, we we're leaving a stop. We got a bite to eat, and uh, he used to ride uh, some dirt bikes when he was younger, and now he's just been riding Harley. So it's always fun to see someone step on someone different. It's it's also fun to see somebody that's just a sport bike rider get on a Harley and appreciate it, and. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of finger pointing with these different types of bikes, but they, they're all just a blast, man. They really are. But it's, it's, it's a fun shot video.